Hey guys, so now we're doing round two of our painting. Um, last time we worked on the sky um, and this is a new day for me, so my sky is totally dry. Um, if you aren't happy with your sky and you wanna go back in, totally fine or add clouds or whatever, um, but I definitely recommend you do that first, let that dry and then come back to um, moving forward. So we left off here at this last distant mountain, so today we're gonna be moving forward. Um, just as a reminder, last time um, we mixed up some coral, some light yellow, um, white. I've got my blues. Um, I had made kind of a faded mountain color. I had red. So basically my primary is black and white, and then I'd mixed a lighter blue and a light yellow and a coral for the sky. Um, but today we're focusing on the mountains, so we're really going to mostly have um, shades of blue. And then, of course, we've got the trees in the foreground. So we talked about showing space. So as my painting progresses, um, the color is going to change because what we can, um, what what we're able to see, um, changes as as things get further away. Um, also, a little bit more detail with what's closer to us. So um, I'm going to start by mixing up my mountain colors. Um, so. I already have this one, so I think I'm going to use white with some blue, um, a little bit of yellow, um, which makes kind of a greenish color, but I just am trying to desaturate that blue a little bit. Um, or Actually, I already have this coral, so that would work well to desaturate and kind of get this um, hazy color. Um, I think I'm probably going to go over this one a little bit, and then I'm going to add a little bit more blue as I come forward, as well as a little bit more detail. So... Let's see. So I'm going to bring my paints back over and start fresh since my colors have dried out since last time. Uh, let's see. So I'm going to go with a phthalo blue. Started with white and added a little of that phthalo. And like I said, I want to desaturate it. So actually going to use my coral for that because coral is essentially um, kind of an orange color and that wasn't quite enough so I'm going to pull a little bit more. There we go. Okay, so this is looking pretty close to what I had the other day. Maybe one more swatch of coral there. Okay, maybe just a little yellow because it does kind of have a yellow look to it, especially since that sky has a little yellow. That was maybe a little too much. No worries, I'll just put a little blue back in there to kind of even it out. Maybe a little white. Oops, a little blue. There we go. Okay, I'm going to go with that um, for my furthest mountain. And then as I come forward, you can notice the blues are getting more vibrant. So now that I'm out of the sky, I'm going to use my smaller bristle brush. And I'm going to coat back over that mountain that we started last time. And notice that this time I'm not painting, you know, horizontally. I'm trying to go with the curvature of the mountain. And also one thing to remember with our mountains, we do not want our mountains to look like triangles. Um, it's okay for them to have, you know, parts that are a little angular, but mountains aren't perfect. And I think a mistake a lot of people make is to make them too triangular and too perfect, and then they don't look realistic. It's looking a little darker than my first color. It's okay if it looks slightly different from the painting, but I do think I'm going to soften this up just a little bit. You have a good night too. Sorry, my room is always open <laughs> saying good night. Okay. So, whoops. Also good to have a paper towel next to you in case you make a mistake. You can always really quick dip it your paper towel in some water and wipe it away. Okay, feeling good about that. 
All right, so now I'm going to move forward, and I want my blue to become a little bit more vivid because I'm going to do this next stretch here. Um, so I'm going to add a little more of my phthalo blue to the color I already have. And that's going to go right here. So it should be starting to look like, and actually that's a pretty dramatic change. I feel like I maybe could have used a little less blue. Um, it doesn't need to be a dramatic change. It just needs to be a noticeable change. You know what else we didn't do? We didn't put any white down like we did with the sky. And so mine's actually not moving quite as well. So I think I'm going to lay some white down here just so I can move into that like I did with the sky because I forgot we started. Okay. And then I'm thinking that I went a little too far with my blue. So I'm going to add a little bit of white and a little bit of the coral to this color I had going just to bring it. There we go. A little bit more of a subtle change that I'm looking for. But again, this one's overlapping the first mountain. Also good to notice like where your light's coming from. Sometimes we have like shadows and whatnot happening in the mountains. So you can kind of look to see. It looks like maybe the light's coming from over here. So that's a little bit trickier, but a lot of times with reference images, there'll be one side that's lighter or darker. Okay, so next is this color. And I'm actually gonna use a little of the ultramarine blue because to me that looks like a little bit more of an ultramarine blue color. Notice it's getting a little darker. I'm not even worrying about those trees yet. And I do see a, like a little bit of breakup in some of the mountains um, so that, that it's not all exactly the same color. So that's something to pay attention to. to too, and I noticed that it's a little bit lighter here at the bottom. So I'm going to work that in just so there's a little bit of difference throughout. In fact, if you look at the mountain, the picture of the mountains, it looks like things are a little bit darker on top and a, bit, a little bit hazier at the bottom. So that's something to pay attention to. And as always, if I don't like something, I can always go back, right? That's a great thing about painting. I can always layer over and redo something. And I do that with my paintings all the time. Okay, so I'm adding some more blue um, because next I've got this mountain that I'm going to block in. And I am noticing it's darker at the top and lighter at the bottom. So paying attention to that as I go. And I am starting to see now in this one, I start to see like a little bit of um, detail. Like I can see some trees. I'm gonna worry about that in a second though. I wanna block it in first before I worry about any of the shapes I'm seeing. Notice how my strokes are looser here than in the sky. Again, I'm kind of going with the form of the mountain instead of horizontally or vertically. And like I said, a little bit lighter at the base. So I'm going to fade a slightly lighter color at the bottom here.
Again, I'm trying to do this tutorial pretty quickly, so you've definitely got more time than it's taking me. Okay, so now I'm seeing some of the details. So this is where I might want to come in with a smaller brush to block some of that in. So I'm just going to kind of just pick up, kind of break up that edge a little bit so it starts to look like I have can just ever so slightly see some trees on that edge we couldn't really see before in the other mountain formations. So not a lot of detail, just not a perfect straight edge. And I can always go back into that later if I need to. fade those out. Okay, cool. Um, probably going to go back into that, but that's a good start. Okay. And then I have my closest mountain next. So I'm going to add some more phthalo to my mixture here. And I'm definitely noticing that darker on top. So I'm actually going to mix just a little bit of black for right in here. You don't have to if you don't want to, but I want mine to be a little bit more dramatic. I need to make sure all my canvas is covered. So if I have any little areas like this, I'm just going to go over and overlap them. Like I said, definitely feeding a little bit as we go down. But it should start to look like we're showing some space here. And here, you know, I might even start seeing detail to where, like, I can start seeing edges of rock. So it's okay to kind of almost emulate that, like, start to kind of, like, break up where your surface is almost, like, bumpy. This is where it really pays off to have plenty of paint mixed up because I'm not having to stop within each mountain and remix the paint, which can be frustrating, especially with acrylic paint because it dries pretty quickly. I think I'm going to even make this part just a little bit darker because it seems to look that way in the picture. So just right in here. All right, so I'm definitely showing some space. Um, I'm noticing a couple of things. Like, I think I would maybe go back and correct this part. I'm not loving how light that is or that color. So I think I want to go back there. Um, and I noticed, like, kind of like a streak through here that I'd want to go back to. Um, so just things to kind of step back from and make sure that you like, you know, what you have going. Um, but lastly, we've got these trees, right? So those are the foreground. So that's the most detail. Um, you can use a palette knife to do that, or you can do like a smaller, like straight edge brush. Um, but it is something you probably want to practice before just going straight onto your canvas. Cause you don't want to add like that last detail and be like, Oh no, um, that's not what I wanted to do. Um, so just practice on a piece of scratch paper first. 
Okay. Um, let's see. So I do have like this edge kind of broken up a little bit. And again, I'm starting to see some more of these tree forms. that I can now see as we get a little bit closer. So I'm going to work those in there. Again, the closer you get, the more detail, the more you can see. Okay, I would probably be spending more time, but this tutorial is getting kind of long, so I'm going to leave off there. Not bad, though. Okay, and then I'm going to work on my foreground trees. So I'm going to go almost black um, because that looks almost black to me, but not quite. So I think I'm going to use my phthalo blue and a little bit of that black to darken it up. And let's see. And again, yours doesn't have to look exactly like the original. So if you want yours to have more trees or less trees, you can definitely do that. I think I'm going to have mine go all the way up here. And I'm just going to break that up. Probably needs to be just a little bit darker so it can show up against that mountain. And I'm going to continue just like working the tree down. It should be getting a little bit wider as you go down. Okay. And just in the interest of this tutorial not taking forever, um, I would, you know, kind of look at it and decide, you know, if I want few other trees. I do want this to pop. Um, so I'd probably keep adding, seeing the texture. Um, if I really wanted to be extra, I could maybe come in with a little bit of my lighter color and just like add a few like highlights, which I know isn't in the picture. But if you just really want to be extra and go for it, I feel like those can make like the trees pop a little bit when you add a little bit of glisten, but up to you. Okay, so that's gonna wrap up our tutorial for today. Um, do your best, again, these are practice. Our goal here is just to get you um, a little bit more confident painting before you go into your real project, right? So you might be doing something totally different from this, but hopefully this gave you a little bit of um, practice. Um, so you're going to post, you're going to post um, your practice painting. And if you need help, remember, we've got that all day remote day Friday. So that would be a perfect time to come get help if you, if you need it. All right, guys, I will talk to you later.